Okay, there you go. <laughs> hey, Stacy. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey I'm going to my music off. You know what I'm saying? How you doing? I'm all right. I'm kind of disappointed. The Rams just threw an interception. Matt Stafford just threw an interception. Oh dang! You yeah. still rooting? You still rooting for the Rams? Of course. Of oh, okay. okay. <laughs> 19, 19. I mean, I'm I, I rooting for them too. Last year, didn't they win? They won last year, so you know. You know that's cool, but they left St. Louis, so it is with this. But it's a little sound, it's a little sound sweet there. But all right, how say how you doing, Stacy? Doing good, doing good. That's Yo, good. Had to had to escape the heat. I'm working in the yeah. heat all day. Yeah, I've been seeing it's been hot in LA, like really, really hot out there. Understatement. Yeah. Well, just go ahead and introduce yourself for the people that don't know who you are and what you do. Well, my name is Stacy Carter II. Obviously, I'm coming from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm out here in Los Angeles right now. Um, I'm a sports podcaster. My show is called Stacy on Sports, and also I um, began a spinoff called Stacy on Sports the World Tour. Mm -hmm. We talk about more international sports. Also, I do video editing. Graphic design work, um, trying to make a comeback in the music world, and et cetera, et cetera. Just trying to use all my talents. And Very multifaceted. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. it. Okay, well, yes. So if y'all don't know, Stacy was, you know, he's a, a rare red art alumni. <laughs> he is the reason that we even talk about sports because prior to that we wasn't we didn't talk about sports. So Stacy is the one who introduced rare red radar to sports world. So just to see where he is now is so dope, and I'm so excited to get into the conversation today about what he has done thus far since joining us. Uh, but you have re recently released your own your second documentary called mm -hmm. The Climb. Back. So, just go ahead and walk us to through like the steps of creating that, and what even inspired you to start a documentary rather than you know writing a book or vlogging. Well, um, this is my second documentary. It takes place two years after the first, which was called Perfect Timing. Um, it's about um, in Perfect Timing. It was like a celebration. It was like, mm -hmm. uh, yes, I made it out of St. Louis. I'm in Los Angeles, this is my dream city. I always want to be here. Mm -hmm. But when I moved here, like I made a whole bunch of wrong decisions. I had to think about like, why am I making these decisions? Why I'm self-sabotaging myself? Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's because, and it was because uh, I wasn't over, I talked about my sister, Tamara Collier, her passing. I wasn't mm -hmm. over that. And I never dealt with that. I always like was shoving those emotions down. Mm -hmm. So like that culminated, that led to a whole bunch of health problems I went through physically and mentally. Um, and also like I stopped pursuing my passion. I stopped writing. I stopped, I was slowing down on the podcast. My, my episodes, in my opinion, weren't that good as they mm -hmm. are now. So like it's based the documentary, the comeback story is basically me getting back to my passion, getting back to the things that I love. And also I'm a big I'm a big Dragon Ball fan, so I would say it's also me taking on a new form. My mm -hmm. like I'm in my ultimate form now. So mm -hmm. like, you know, now I'm in like a better place. So it's like yeah. uh it's like a reawakening, so to speak. I love that. And so you said that, well, you said that you had made a lot of bad decisions when you moved to L.A. So before we get into that, just walk us through the process of you, of you even, you know, going from St. Louis to L.A. Like, what was your goal when you initially went out there? Like, why did you go to L.A.? Well, like I said, L.A. is my dream city. I always wanted to move out here. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, ever since I was 10 years old, I was mm -hmm. supposed to, like, visit, but I never did. But, um... In 2019, I visited. I was here for a few days and loved it. Immediately loved it. And I was like, yeah. this is this is my home right here. So uh, I made it my home. Uh, my move during the pandemic, July 2020. And I was like, at that point, I was like, it's just it's time to go. Yeah. It's time and that's to a go. crazy time to move. Now that I really think about it, like I forgot that the pandemic was going through there. <laughs> and you touch on a lot of stuff through the documentary, which we'll talk about. But... I know that you was basically just saying like how you had guilt and things like that, but um, when you went out there, was it your goal to tap into sports journalism or you just wanted to network in general? Uh, yeah, it was my goal to continue on to my sports journalism mm -hmm. journey. It was my goal to continue on in other 
mediums of music and mm-hmm. and uh, media and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. I, I view Los Angeles as like a launching pad to the brand that is yeah. me. That mm-hmm. is me. But you know, obviously, uh, it didn't work out that way. So. Mm-hmm. And so why do you say that though? Like I know that I know that you obviously you reflect you have goals, but why do you feel like it didn't work? It's only been two years, but so in your eyes, like where did you see yourself or why do you feel like it didn't work out just yet? Because I got huge expectations of myself. Mm-hmm. Like I I expect myself to be consistent when it comes to creating content and putting it out there. I expect to do numbers. I expect myself to be great yeah. because that's you know, that's where I want to be. And I know where I want to head to in life. So, like, mm-hmm. anything, anytime that I fall below that, you know, it always bothers me as somebody who's, like, perfectionist and somebody yeah. who's obsessed with just improving. And mm-hmm. when I feel like I've stalled on that improvement, mm-hmm. then I feel like I'm failing. And yeah. I don't like to, I don't like to settle on moral victims, too. I think, uh that was like my issue like I was like well at least I did this like no I, I want to get the whole thing done I want to accomplish so much that's interesting that's interesting because I feel like I'm the opposite like I have to be like okay well at least I did this I made a post today like you know like I have to give myself <laughs> those small little pets on my back because if not of course you will like your mind can play games on you obviously like you will feel like dang I'm not doing enough like I can compare myself to complex and all these but it's kind of hard to do that, especially when you're your own entity and you're doing things yourself, funding things yourself, and you know, basically backing everything. And so, that is really dope that you created your own documentary. You edited everything, shot everything, mm-hmm. you everything. know, created like your own layout and what you want to talk about. So, I'm just going to give you the pat back because I feel like that's dope. <laughs> um, and I feel Thank like you. that was low key like a form of therapy for me because I was like just even being a part of it. It was an honor. So I'm like, dang, like what even inspired you to do that and like how you even talked about the things i want to tell everything that you talked about in the documentary because i want people to look at it and watch it because it's really really good um but just to talk about the topics like i I feel like you've done a great job even though like of course in your mind you think that like i want to be up here you know what i'm saying so um uh, in the documentary the person that you had in there he was basically talking about how he had never seen a man cry Man, I kid you not, he just broke down, cried. I mean, I never seen a man cry until I seen Stacy cry that day. And that was crazy to me because obviously, like, you know, the stigma on me and just showing emotions. Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, the things that I really loved about the documentary was your transparency, was your willingness to be open about your, you know, the mental health and depression and just the expectations of yourself. So what was that process like of even being vulnerable in those moments? Like, you know, what was that like? Um, it's therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Therapeutic. I- because obviously it's hard to it's hard to afford consistent therapy. So yeah. you got to find different ways to uh, express yourself. That way you can be better mentally. And um, mm-hmm. like you were saying, like I inspired you, you know, to look at your own mental health and mm-hmm. stuff like that. That's one of the purposes of this documentary, like for people to like um, kind of like get in touch with it emotionally, like. Mm-hmm. It's more. It's more people out there that go through things that I go through: anxiety, depression, uh, grieving over loss. Um, mm-hmm. Just, just trying to like make a living out there, mm-hmm. career out off their skills, and like you know, the struggle is real. And, right. Um, and I want to show people because, like, I feel like pe- people in general got this perception about me. Like, I'm like this like incredible guy like I dress up nice and you know I present myself well Mm -hmm. but there's like but there's like a lot of things that I had to go through in order to you know present myself like this to be this confident and Mm -hmm. to talking about something as sensitive as going through depression and stuff like that so like I just want to show like you know I'm you know I'm human too Mm -hmm. you know, right? and I go through these things, and this is what I went through to get to this point. Mm-hmm. And what you're going through right now, or anybody what they're going through right now, is it is temporary. I know in a moment that it seemed like it's never going to end, it's the pain mm-hmm. is never going to stop, but it is temporary. And as long as you have that mind state that you want to get better and you want to move forward with your future, then you can come out of anything. 
Right. I love that. And so I know that you said you want to be an inspiration. And in the documentary, you were talking about, like, you know, after you were grieving the loss of your sister, how you took on a lot of responsibility. So was there anybody that you looked up to or that you saw inspiration out of, like, you know, during those moments of grieving and just trying to figure out your purpose? Uh, I was so isolated mm -hmm. during that time. Like, I really, like, I, I think I was just trying to be that person. I was trying mm -hmm. to be that even kill personality, mm -hmm. somebody that can handle things and, and you know, just knock it out the park. Mm -hmm. So, like, I wasn't really, like, looking at anybody, like, looking up to anybody. But, like, I would say at that time period, like, my family was important. And I realized how important they was, you know. Yeah. I was around my mom more, uh, my, you know, communicate with my brother more because me and my brother, we just, we stay busy. My brother, he's a mm -hmm. coach. He's a coach, basketball coach at the Larry Hughes Basketball Academy. Oh, cool. He's like, okay. he's like top level. So mm -hmm. he's, he's everywhere. And then also my sister's kids, mm -hmm. you know, my, my, basically my niece and my nephew mm -hmm. at that time, like they just, you know, just being around them, I guess like, uh, kind of like I was able to sidestep the, the mm -hmm. grieving process a little yeah. bit. So. No, they they kept me afloat. Yeah, and I definitely understand that. Like grieving, obviously, I don't feel like it's ever a point where you will feel a hundred percent whole or just like, oh, I'm great. No, it's gonna it comes honestly in waves. So, what was like your family's reaction when you told them that you wanted to, um, you know, move to LA? Because especially when. I know for me personally, when I went through some grieving, like my family really linked on me and then I was looking back, like I had to set those boundaries. Like at one point, all my siblings were sleeping in my room. Like we were just all together. Like that's just how they needed to grieve too. And I was like, I really need some time for me. Like, cause at that point it was just a lot. So how was it like when you explained to them, like, you know, I gotta do this for me. Gotta put me first and move to LA. Like and follow my dreams. Like how was that conversation? I, well, uh, my brother was understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, he he ain't gonna fully admit it, but he kind of looks up to me. So like, mm -hmm. so like, you know, he understand. Like my mom, it was like a it's like tell or two halves. Mm -hmm. um, on one side, she supports, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. on the other side, like with her losing her only daughter mm -hmm. and her oldest son was a huge help. Mm -hmm. around the house because I stayed with them like the last six months mm -hmm. in my time in St. Louis and for me to you know want to pack my bags and go I think she kind of took that personally a little bit yeah. like it's like kind of like breaking up the family mm -hmm. and you know want to do your thing but like I get it in a way like you know um, I was like the only person that she can depend on Mm -hmm. And, you know, like me being her oldest son and like I said, losing her daughter. And then at that time, I won't go into detail, but at that time, her mm -hmm. and my, my brother was at odds. Mm -hmm. So, so like, I guess she kind of felt a way about it. It felt like, like, I wasn't like, I didn't want to help her no more. Yeah. Something like that. But I mean, like, I, I will be honest, I kind of, Felt like that, not mm -hmm. because of her, but because of like what you were saying. Like mm -hmm. at some point, I had to, I had to do me at some point. Like, you know, um, I admit, like I was becoming like very, very unhappy mm -hmm. with with staying with them because I felt like I wasn't fulfilling a purpose. I wasn't like living for myself no more. I felt like I wasn't free. I was right. just stuck in this space. So like, I just, I mean, I had to get out of there. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's the best decision that. One of the best decisions I made recently. Yeah, that's awesome. But how do you how do you like LA? Like, obviously you had expectations stuff, but how is life in LA? Like, I know you hear a lot of different stereotypes, but do you feel like mm -hmm. you found your tribe there? Like, I know that you um, also feature one of your co-hosts in there. Like, how do you how have you been adjusting? Oh, uh, I love I love LA. Mm -hmm. LA is everything. It's it's everything that you think it is, good mm -hmm. and bad. Yeah. You know, you know, the the weather is great. And I like the fact that if you stay like in kind of a rough area here, like you can like get in your car and go to like the beach. Oh yeah. It's not yeah. that far away. You can go to Beverly Hills from Inglewood, you know, mm -hmm. in about twenty five, thirty minutes and like just get away from everything. so I, I love that I love that part. Of course it is expensive as hell. 
Mm-hmm. And you know the the homeless problem here is, is very real. Yeah, and it's very, and it's very blatant. But other than that, I I love LA. I, yeah. And then um being out here inspired me to travel, which was one of my goals back in St. Louis. But I just never by myself to do it. But coming mm-hmm. out here, coming out here, like I was inspired to like just go see the world. Mm-hmm. So like ever since I've been out here, I've been to San Diego, San Francisco. Uh, Phoenix and Miami. So nice. Yeah. yeah. I just recently visited LA earlier this year, just on some spontaneous, but it was actually really nice because I was so like anti LA. But I can see why people move there because the beach is nice. Like I can sit out there all day long. Like it's very, very therapeutic. Um, but I do want to talk about, I do want to talk about like sports and stuff too, get your takes on certain things because obviously you're a sports journalist. But before we get in there, I do want you to talk more about Stacey on sports and what that is. So if people want to check that out, um, what is that and how it can like know what all they do? Stacey on sports is a sports podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, on, this, on the podcast, I have a team. And we just talk about the trending topics that going on during that week that led up to the recording. So every topic on there, I try to make it as fresh as possible and like what's ever trending, just try to take advantage of it. Um, we talk about anything from NFL, NBA, we had WNBA talk on our college football we did that recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and now like it's grown to like a spinoff thing where we tackle like Major League Baseball and for the first time on that episode I talked about tennis and, yes. and, and and like world world soccer, like European soccer. So like we just try to tackle those topics mm-hmm. that trend in, in that week and like just you know, push out content and um, you know, the process is long. I you know, I orchestrate all the episodes, I edit the videos, I chop it up, I put the music in and all that stuff. But nice. you know, just just trying to just trying to grow it so that way I can be on that same level as the other podcast and try to make it big on one of those platforms like Fox Sports or ESPN or something like that. So Right. It's, it's, it's been incredible so far. Yeah. And like, how has it been like stepping into that, that leader role where you have a team? I saw that like you guys said you were documented your meetings and stuff like that. Just being creative. Like, that's the reason that I love like Red Radar and like, you know, we used to have our meetings and stuff. So how has it been for you like stepping into that leadership role and being creative like that? Natural. Mm-hmm. It's been natural because yeah. I got my mind, I got my mind made up. I know what I want. You got a vision. Uh, yeah, I got a vision, yeah. and I try to employ that vision onto them. Like in the documentary, uh, I let them know that even though this is Stacey on Sports, this is y'all show too. Exactly. Because this year, Stacey on Sports wouldn't exist without y'all. So mm-hmm. I'm try- I steady let them know that, like, mm-hmm. this is y'all show too. I want y'all to be invested as much as I am. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe like not on my level because I'm kind of crazy with it, but. Like just you know Yeah, you should be just as passionate, honestly. When you yeah, do have people yeah. on the team. And I think that's just for anybody because I know right now we're in the state, so we're like everybody wants to be a boss. But when I watch documentaries of people who went from like an assistant to the exec, like something that really stuck out to me is this lady, her name is Carlene. She owns the Vanity Group. She's actually from St. Louis. Um mm. and she does she was P P Diddy's uh, assistant. It's something that she said on this documentary. She was saying that when she was PDD's assistant, she was her all her whole goal was how can I be his best assistant? How can I be the best person for him to make sure that his empire is growing? And that really made me think because I feel like right now we're in a state where, of course, everybody wants to be a boss, and sometimes people' intentions aren't as pure when they join people or do certain things. That's why, like for me personally, like I'm very cautious of who I allow around. Me and just right, right up here because like people don't really have good intentions. But when you join something, I feel like yes, you should be just as passionate as the owner, or just because you're a representation of it. It's a part of you. So I love the fact that you said that in there, and like they were so receptive to it, and like your ideas and monetization, all that stuff. I was like, oh my god, like that's really <laughs> dope. I was like so I happy got, to see all that. I got, I got some of that from you. I Period. Remember, yes. Yeah. Hey, I remember, I no, remember for real. You said we got ninety cent. We could all split it, and that's literally like that's how it should be. So I love that. I was like, okay, Stacy. I was so happy to see that. But 
let's just go ahead and get to some sports trivia. I just yeah. hate basketball because, like, I really don't know much about other sports. So I know that <laughs> you always talk about sports on here. So I got a couple questions to see. Uh-oh. If you know the answers, I can give you uh, multiple choice. Or, you I'm know, uh, like, I can give you multiple choice. And, or, like, I can say the question and then you can say, I want multiple choice. Or you can just try to guess it. Okay, so sports trivia basketball edition. Like, who's that player, basically? Okay, so which player averaged a triple double for the entire season last year? Wait, entire season? Mm-hmm. Entire season last year in mm-hmm. 2020? 21. 21? Yeah, I think uh, it was, let me look. I think it was 22. 222, my bad. I don't remember. I don't remember 22. Okay, Good. let me let me give you uh, right. like some. You want me to give you like a, a list? A, B, C. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Stephen Curry, Russell Westbrook, or LeBron James. Oh, that's easy. That's Russell Westbrook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cause I don't remember I, him averaging triple double last year. He might have, but I know. I think it did say 2022. It is. I have okay. to look back on her. Yeah, I just put some questions from Google. I ain't gonna lie, because you know me, I'm not a sports girl, but yeah, I'll be trying. But <laughs> okay, so what NBA team holds 17 NBA championships? It's a tie. It's a tie. Is it? 20, yeah, it's a tie. It should be a tie between two teams the um, Lakers and Celtics. They had the Lakers on there. So I'm gonna give you that. Yeah. yeah, it was the Lakers. That's what they put on it. But they okay. won more recently. Yeah, I feel like this question is easy. I just put this one on her. Okay, which NBA player is the highest paid of 2021? The highest paid? Mm-hmm. Wow. Some of them got so many contracts. Um, I know it. I know it wasn't LeBron. <laughs> Was it LeBron? Oh. Yeah, I'm sorry. I can't stop that because. <laughs> I would have said LeBron. You, who, who you feel like would have been higher than him? Not because he don't get the highest, but like, he is the highest. They put that. They put yeah. He, who, I don't know nobody else that did more than him. Because just like a few months ago, Damian Lillard got a contract and he makes fifty mil a year now. So. Oh, okay. I think they said LeBron was at one hundred sixty. Well, I gotta go back on that, but it definitely was LeBron. I wouldn't have thought nobody else, but yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how many NBA teams are there in the league? Well, right now it's 30. Yep. Oh my God, you're so good at this. What the hell? Okay, this is the last question. <laughs> okay, last question. What year was the NBA founded? Oh, crap. This is the mm. one that you probably got in your own. Mm. <laughs> mm. Was, it, was it like 19... 1940s? 40... Five. Oh, you were so close. Oh my God. It was 1946. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of pity. No, I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> no, 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 no. You no, dang no, her got all of them right, though. Like, that was really on the wrong one. See, that's, that's why it's called Stacey on Sports. Period. That's, that's yes. See, Stacey this man knows what he's talking about. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. Like, every time he used to do predictions, his predictions was always right. And it's like me, I'm the pop culture girl, the music girl. So somebody that was known by sports, that was super dope. But I mean, that that was actually really cool that you knew all those questions. I sure did. I was looking at these like, I hope you get these right. I hope these are not too hard. <laughs> but, but yes. Okay. So what's next for Stacey? I know that you talked about in the documentary, you was like, you're, you know, you're on your victory tour. You know what I'm saying? Like this, you're not going to stop until you reach those goals that you have for yourself. So what's next for you and, you know, in the Stacey documentary? Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely, uh, continuing on growing Stacey on sports, mm-hmm. you know, turn that into like a powerful, it's like a powerful brand. And uh, mm-hmm. right now, right now I'm just thinking about merchandising and like just turn it into like a, a bigger brand mm-hmm. for itself. Um, I am still interested in making a comeback musically mm-hmm. just because I don't want to leave no stone unturned. I don't want to, you know, regret stopping um, mm-hmm. because I have potential. Mm-hmm. I have potential, but I just got in my own way. And that's like been like one of the hardest things to like for me to overcome. So I wanted to overcome that. Mm-hmm. And I know I know it's easier said than done. I'm you know, thirty one years old and I'm still trying to rap. That perception that perception yeah. is terrible. 
mm-hmm. it's terrible on social media. However, you know, it's never too late. It's never too late. Yes. And if you believe in something, go for it. And, you know, I'm still trying to work on that. So hopefully that turns to something. Mm-hmm. Um, I do plan to release at least two more documentaries. Mm-hmm. Now, um, I forgot to say this in the beginning. Um, this is actually starting with Perfect Time. It's actually a, like a like a triple threat. It's like a trilogy. Mm-hmm. So like I wanted to do one for like the beginning, and then like me in the middle of uh, pursuing my passions, and then like mm-hmm. at the end, like do a documentary saying like how I got here, like and yeah. like go back and tell that story. So I already got mm-hmm. the title for it. It's called. It's gonna be called Finally. Oh, okay. Where are our exclusive? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exclusive. Period. It's gonna be called finally. Uh, hopefully, that come in like you know a few years. Mm-hmm. Uh, gather material and, and all that, but mm-hmm. like that's like the trilogy. And I want to also I want to do a side project. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I'm still thinking about my mom. I want to do a side project for my sister because uh, yes. because next year will be five years mm-hmm. uh, since she transitioned on. So like I want to like do something to tell her story too because she mm. she was an inspiration within herself. Yeah. So like that's I love it. that. I love that. And I don't know, I always tell you I'm proud of you and you know we have our little random check ins and stuff, but mm-hmm. I just wanna tell you like just for me personally, just knowing you, like we met freaking through Twitter and the rest <laughs> is history. But I just wanna say I'm so proud of you and what you have done this far and that like, you know, obviously social media we look at that every day and like dang it compare our stuff, compare our numbers, but I feel like what you have achieved thus far is definitely an accomplishment in itself and that you know, of course you have your rough days, but keep going if you ever need anything of course i'm here for you we're ready i'm here for you we love you appreciate me cheering you from la actually jessica just moved to la too so i'm gonna uh, connect you guys too because she just literally drove all the way to la from North carolina so i love the fact that y'all chase y'all dreams and you know what makes y'all happy so i'm gonna always be here cheering you on but i just want to say thanks for taking the time to chat with us today again you guys definitely check out his documentary i'm gonna actually put all this on the website so y'all can go click it. I'm in both his documentaries, so I'm saying you want to check me out too. I'm in there and I'll dive more into like, you know, Stacy and all the things he's accomplished as well from a rare radar standpoint and just as a, a sports journalist. So definitely check that out. But if you have any final words or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to get my little spiel and you know, give you your flowers while you're still here. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I, I appreciate it. Of course, of course. Well, all right, Stacey, I'll talk to you later. All right, thank you for having me. Of course. All right, bye. All right. (laughs)